Today, we are gonna be making some really large Dollar Tree Christmas decor, just using some of these really easy to find items at Dollar Tree. If you love budget-friendly DIY design and decor, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button so you'll know every time we upload a video. Our first project today was inspired by Rebecca Robeson's famous book page, Cone Wreath, but we're not making a wreath. You guys know how much I love Christmas trees, so we are gonna take that concept and turn it into a really cool tree. I decided to use encyclopedia pages, and all I did was tear them out, trim off that rough edge, and start to make my cones. You know what? This is a great project for sitting in front of the TV, watching one of those cheesy Netflix or Hallmark Channel movies. Now I found to make my cones, I went about two thirds of the way up the page and I just started turning and rolling. The hardest part about this is making sure that you've got no strange colored pictures or weird information showing. Once I have it all rolled, I just put a little bit of tape on the back and a staple again about a third of the way down and then you have to make about a ton of these. It will depend on the size of the tree you want to make. I think I used somewhere in the neighborhood of about 80 cones for mine. To prep my foam core to cut my tree shape, I made center marks at the top and the bottom. Along the bottom, I measured seven inches in each direction, so my tree would be 14 inches across at the bottom. And then I just used a large stake. I don't have a ruler long enough for this. Actually, I discovered that I don't have anywhere large enough to work on large projects like this. So we may have to come up with a new plan if we're gonna keep making big projects. Anyway, then I just took my box cutter and cut that shape and I did it on two pieces of foam core and you'll see why soon. We're going to jump ahead and make the base so it's all ready to go. I have a spindle from another project from the Habitat Restore and the little Dollar Tree plaque. So I'm going to be using a dowel and drilling into both pieces. So this is going to create a nice, sturdy and level base. So I matched up my drill bit to the same size as that skewer. And I'm just gonna drill a hole in each piece and then pop that skewer in there with a little bit of glue, trim it off to the right size, and then we're gonna have our base all set to go. Now for the fun part, we're gonna take our gazillion cones and start assembling. I am going to work from either side, overlapping those cones at the bottom of my tree. I'm gonna lay down a whole bunch of hot glue on this one and just start working my way from one side and the other. And I'm doing that so I get a nice even look. So left, right, and back and forth. So especially on this first row, everything lines up really well. Now. I will tell you there is something I wish I had done a little bit differently on the center here because later on when I go to attach this to the base it was really tricky with that lower level of glue that I put down. Don't do that and you'll see when we get to the end why I had to kind of finagle my way into those cones in order to attach my base. And then just keep working your way up the tree. You can see how much I overlapped these. You can do whatever suits you. You could make it tighter or you could make them farther apart. And I just worked my way up, ending with one cone at the top and trimming off the extra. Because I wanted my tree to look really great from all sides, I'm using a completely separate piece to make the back. And that way when I attach it to the base, you won't be able to see where it attaches. So we're gonna recreate this process on my second piece of foam core. With the base all ready to go, and can I tell you, I absolutely love this. I think it's gonna look so pretty. Now we're going to attach it to each of the two trees. And this is where you can see I ran into a little bit of trouble and it was a lot harder to access that 
than I expected. So I'm going to staple this on because I want it to be really secure and I'm gonna have to just kind of monkey around with those two lower cones in order to do that. I am gonna flip it over and add a little bit of hot glue to the back where the paper meets the base where the foam core meets the base before I attach the other one on the other side. Now you're gonna lay the other one on top and you can see what I meant by hiding where the base and the foam core meet. And that's why I did it two-sided like this instead of just attaching the cones to the back of the first tree. So now we're gonna do the same thing, staple it down and then we're going to glue the sides of the trees all the way down to create a really seamless finish. So that hot glue could set up, I used my little Dollar Tree clamps on there and once the glue was good to go, I am going to now put a layer of the cones all the way down that side seam to hide those. This is gonna make for a really great finished tree when we're all done. I folded up one of those encyclopedia pages and made like a little cuff around the top of the tree because this one's not getting a star. I was going for something really simple. Now I had this Believe left over from a two years ago project and I loved the way I had finished it. It's just one of those Dollar Tree galvanized words and I just uh, sponged a little paint in different colors over top of it. So I'm going to attach that video down below so you can take a look. Look, we're going to take that piece and attach it to the front of the tree and I just love how simple this tree came out. I just love this tree and it was so hard for me to get one full shot of it. And I know you guys really like that so you can grab a screenshot, but my studio is just not that big and I couldn't step back that far. So hopefully that picture at the end did the trick. This is a Kirkland's dupe that has been on my to-do crafting bucket list for a couple of years now. I see it every year and I want it so bad. So we're gonna recreate this on some black foam core using my Cricut. Now don't worry if you don't have a Cricut, I've got a plan for you, just stay tuned. Now I decided to try out for the very first time the Dollar Tree transfer tape. And I had it in my head that maybe that it would be less tacky than the good stuff. So I did go ahead, like I always do with fresh transfer tape, and press it onto something linty. So like a pillow or some kind of fabric just to help remove a little bit of the tack. Well, here's my disclaimer. There's no sound here because there were so many bad words. In my opinion, I would not use this transfer tape. Yes, it's a great deal, but you know what? I fought with this. I ended up turning off the camera at one point because I just could not handle how difficult it was to work with. Now I'm going to take you through some of that right here. Now this is cut into several pieces just so that it was going to be a little bit more manageable to work with. Now again, I didn't, having never used this before, I didn't press down too too much because I wanted to see how much it would stick to the paper. So again, disclaimer, it was a nightmare to work with. I barely touched it. I'm just running my Cricut scraper over top and it tore off some of the black paper. It tore off the letters. It actually tore some of the letters in half. And I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but like I said, it was just so much work. When I attached the second piece, the second half of the decal, I, I don't rub it down at all. And like I said, that was the one where I had to just stop. This took me the better part of half an hour to get this down. And my frustration level was through the roof.
Oh my goodness, it was painful just to watch that again. All right, so what I am using to make the frame for this, and we're doing the frame at the top and the bottom, is one of these wooden signs from Dollar Tree that they had out for fall. It is a great wood finish on this, and I decided to leave it completely raw. Now the beauty of these is they are so easy to cut. Just gently, I'm barely pressing down, and I'm just going through and through. And with this wood, you can literally hear it cutting away the fibers and before you know it, you'll be finished. And just do the same thing to cut the other piece for the bottom of your sign. Now I also lost a couple of letters when I transferred it over. So when I went back and remade those, I used my masking uh, type transfer tape and oh my goodness, it was so easy. It wasn't even funny how easy it was. I really wish I had just used that transfer tape for everything, but I thought the clear would be a lot easier to line it up and make sure I was getting those decals in the right spot. This is one of those live and learn moments. Now all we have left to do is attach those wooden pieces at the top and the bottom and they do have a right and a wrong side so make sure you take a good look before you do that. I did give my cut edge a quick sand just to make sure it was nice and smooth and finished. Well, despite the frustration, this may be my new favorite Christmas DIY. I was read this story every Christmas Eve as a child and my kids and I, and yes, they are 17 and 24, still do this on Christmas Eve. Okay, now I promised you an alternative if you didn't have a vinyl cutting machine. So I'm gonna include both of these free printables down below that you can create super quick and easy. I've got the white on black as well as the traditional black on white. I'm just using Dollar Tree frames to put these together. I bought one frame that had that little raised mat and the other frame, which is the 11 by 16, I believe, wasn't a great color so I'm going to give it a quick coat of my chalked paint and then we're going to put in one of the Dollar Tree mats as well as the printable and we're going to be done. Like that's it. Like is this even a DIY? Yeah I think so. And there you have it. This takes super quick, cheap, and easy to a whole other level. Two really pretty pieces of holiday decor, both of which are spoken for by a couple of friends of mine and heading out to their homes for the holidays. This is another one of those inspired by projects. I took my mom out to this great Christmas store last weekend and I absolutely loved this. And of course I looked at it and went, I can make that. So I am using Dollar Tree mop handles to make this. So I have taken the mops off the end and bonus, we now have five mop heads we can make another project with. And I initially intended to flatten the ends with my pliers, but these are so thin, I was able to just push down with my hand and flatten them out. Now, word to the wise, they do crack a little bit at the top because they are so thin, but we're gonna be okay to keep working with these. 
I went ahead and drilled holes right through the top of each one. And then I'm gonna thread one of the Dollar Tree zip ties through that to attach them all together. To make the rings further down, I'm gonna use one of these Dollar Tree 3D wreath forms. I cut those apart and created smaller hoops with them, again, using the Dollar Tree zip ties to hold them together. I used two zip ties just so that I could overlap them and they wouldn't pop apart and this worked out really, really well. And because this is gonna be all black at the end, it doesn't show. Now I have put one about a third of the way down and then one slightly farther down and we're gonna add zip ties to attach these. Now I did it so you can kind of see here, so it's opposite. I do one from right to left and one the next one from left to right. I hope that makes sense. It just made it more stable and secure, kind of the sum of its parts. I felt like if I had done them all the same way, it just would have torqued in that direction. Now that it's all assembled, we're gonna go hit it with some spray primer in black. And I don't have a ton of this, so I may have to get creative here. Okay, back to the studio, not working on the bed anymore to finish this off. I didn't wanna use wire to wrap the rest of it. If you remember in the inspiration piece, it kind of had that wire wrapped all the way around from top to bottom. So I hit my Dollar Tree and I found this great waxed cord in the beading section and I really liked it. So we're gonna start by tying this off on one of the top pieces and then we're just gonna work our way down. Okay, I didn't want this to slip and slide all over the place so I have a theory for when we get down to the next section. All right, to do this section, what I did was every other pole, I wrapped the cord around. So I did it every other one. So what happens because there's five poles is every other row, one is wrapped and one just goes around. And I think it made for a really cool texture on the last two sections of this tree. For the top, I picked up this gold star at my Dollarama. I'm going to spray paint this black and pop it on top. Well, I hope you're ready for this because I almost junked this project so many times that I'm kind of ambivalent towards it. You know, kind of like a love-hate relationship. So you guys, it's your job to head down to the comments and tell me what you think, because I'm really on the fence on this one. I kind of love it, and yet I kind of hate it for what it put me through. Thanks as always for stopping by Lisa and Company, you guys. Don't forget to head over to Instagram and follow us there. And here's a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Thanks again for stopping by Lisa and Company, and we'll see you in the next video.